Lift off here, we're talking about myelinated axons. Myelinated axons use a type of action potential that is called saltatory conductions. Saltatory conduction. I don't know if anyone speaks Spanish, but saltar means to hop or to jump. And saltatory conduction um, got that name because the action potential hops its way from one node of Ron VA to the other. Let's talk about how that works. First of all, I ended the last video telling you that myelinated axons managed to zip their action potential more quickly while using less energy. I'm not sure if the problem of action potential conduction is obvious to you. So let me describe it in a little more detail. You have got axons that go from one part of your brain to another part of your brain and from your brain down your spinal cord, right? And then you have got axons that will go all the way from your middle of your back all the way down the back of your leg. All right, okay, you're fine with all of that, I'm sure. Does it occur to you how remarkable it is that when you send a command for your toe to tap, does it occur to you how remarkable it is that that seems instant? Doesn't it seem instant? If I tell you uh, twiggle your toes, doesn't it seem like they do it instantly? Well, it's not instant. It actually does take an interval of time that we just don't perceive, but it is remarkably fast. Now, keep in mind how awesome that is. So if here is going to be your axon here, right? And he, I'm sorry, your, your cell body, and here's your axon. When we are talking about an action potential, we need to open the voltage-gated channel, allow the sodium to go through, which opens the next one, which allows sodium to go through, which opens the next one, which allows sodium to go through, which opens the next one, which allows sodium to go through. And these things are microscopically small. And yet, that all of these guys will open and open and open and open all the way from your spinal cord, all the way down the back of your leg, faster than you can even perceive it. That's astonishing. And the reason that, that action potentials can travel that fast is because of this saltatory conduction that was invented by life at some point. The fact that it is faster but also uses less energy is even more remarkable. Now, a couple of things. Thing one, the sodium potassium pumps and potassium linkage channels are only found at the nodes of Ranvier. Okay, that's number one. This is the reason that myelinated axons use less energy. The depolarization of the membrane of the axon only happens at the nodes of Ranvier. So it's only at the nodes of Ranvier that we really need to use the sodium potassium pumps and potassium leakage channels to set things back up to their resting membrane potential. So the fact that the sodium potassium pumps are only found at the nodes of Ranvier, that is why it uses less energy. Now, the fact that the voltage-gated channels are only found at the nodes of Ranvier is what allows this action potential to travel faster. So here we are at the threshold and voltage-gated channel opens, I'm sorry, at the axon hillock and we've met threshold. So voltage gated channels open. So they open their friends. 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 And then when we get here to the myelin sheath, that electrical charge can hop. Now the electrical charge that we're talking about cannot hop all the way down to your toe. It can only hop a microscopically small segment of the axon. However, it hops from one node of Ranvier to the other. And then that'll open voltage-gated channels, which open their friends, which open their friends, which open their friends, hop. Which open their friends, which open their friends, which open their friends, hop. 
But you see, whenever we get to do that hop because of the uh, myelin sheath insulating the axon at that point, it means that when it's time for us to set things back to their resting membrane potential, we only have to do it here and here and here so we don't use as much energy. And the fact that we're not opening action potentials all the way down the way means that it can happen faster. Uses energy, happens faster. The ions are only flowing through the voltage-gated channel, so since those are only at the nodes of Rambier, then the ions are only flowing at the nodes of Rambier. So here we've got a race between regular conduction that gets called continuous conduction and saltatory conduction, right? So we start the race and as we start the race, everything is starting fine. Until we get to the end of the axon hillock, they're neck and neck. Now at five seconds, this five milliseconds, this one is still just turning away, turning away, turning away. But this one has started here and it hopped, it hopped all the way to the next node of Rambier. Right? Now this one is still churning away, churning away, churning away, but this one is hopped, 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 two more nodes of Rambier. So if we look at 10 milliseconds, this continuous conduction is only about a third the way down. This saltatory conduction is two thirds the way down, and it's only one hop from the end. You know what's funny? I don't actually know if this has ever happened to you, but I know it's happened to me. Um, there are times when you actually experience the gap between sensory neurons that are using saltatory conduction and sensory neurons that are using continuous conduction. I don't know if it's ever to happen to you that like you, you, you hit your toe on something really hard or you hit your knee on something really hard and it hurt, but it hurt bad enough that you know that if you hold still for a second, there will be just like this extra like wave of pain that'll hit you. The reason for that is the first sensation of pain came by saltatory conduction and that delayed wave of pain comes by continuous conduction. So there actually is a noticeable gap in time in the transportation speed of the two uh, neurons. Now, this is really important for medical situations. Here we've got our action potential hopping its way down the, the axon, down the nodes of Rambier, and this is how things would no, no, normally happen. Now remember, remember please, that we will only find the voltage-gated channels and the sodium-potassium pumps here at the nodes of Rambier. So we would say that the distribution of these proteins is patchy or clumped or something like that. It is not even, okay? So continuous would be the opposite of what happens here. This is not continuous. This is an uneven distribution. Here's the problem. The problem happens in diseases that cause demyelination. Demyelinating diseases are very often autoimmune, meaning your own immune cells are destroying your own Schwann cells, which is not right, shouldn't happen. It is a disease. Now, in the peripheral nervous system, when this happens, the most common cause is Guillain-Barré syndrome. And if you've been listening to discussions of vaccinations for the COVID-19 virus, then you may have heard people mention that there was once a vaccine that was very effective, but it had a significant occurrence of Guillain-Barre in people that were vaccinated. And we wanna make sure that the COVID-19 vaccine does not cause Guillain-Barre. Guillain-Barre caused an autoimmune syndrome. And so you can see that these Schwann cells that were supposed to be here, that they are gone. And since they are gone, this is what's gonna happen. The action potential is going to start going down the cell, but because these areas of insulation are not there, that electricity only can get so far and then it stops. So what would you imagine would be symptoms of Guillain-Barre? Symptoms of Guillain-Barre would be a paralysis of those regions that are being 
uh, spoken to by those particular nerve cells, and it also can cause numbness, right? Guillain-Barre has a tendency to be uh, temporary. People can recover from Guillain-Barre, but we, we still don't accept vaccines that um, will um, make this happen, even in a very small percentage of the people who get vaccinated. That's, that's why scientists are so cautious about rushing a vaccine into very wide usage. Now, demyelination can happen in the central nervous system, but when demyelination happens in the central nervous system, it will be because of damage to the oligodendrocytes, right? So the demyelinating diseases that damage this um, uh, myelin sheath don't generally damage the peripheral myelin sheath. And the most common demyelinating disease of the central nervous system is multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis. And we are concerned about um, this autoimmune disease being triggered by vaccines as well. So we do not accept any vaccines that trigger either one of these demyelinating autoimmune disorders. And now you know why they happen, right? We are going to start discussing just the general nervous system, kind of part-wise, instead of neurophysiology um, in the next video. But let's answer a couple of questions. What is necessary for saltatory conduction? Well, you need myelin sheaths, right? You do have a patchy distribution of voltage-gated channels. They are only present in some areas, which means we only need sodium-potassium pumps in those same areas. And then you need myel Schwann cells or oligodendrocytes because they are the ones that make the myelin sheaths. So you need all the above. Okay. We'll start here at the beginning of the next video.